If we have lots of IP version 6 speaking devices, we probably don't want to have to visit each device and manually configure an IP version 6 IP address on that device. The great news is we have the option of doing auto configuration and there are a couple of approaches to this automatic configuration of an IP address on a client. One approach is called the stateful auto configuration approach. This works a lot like IP version 4 does when we're using a DHCP server except this time we're going to be using a DHCP version 6 server. The other option is a stateless auto configuration and this is where the router is going to advertise out the global address and the local subnet information for the link on which that client resides and then the client can just take that global information that it learned from the router and add on its EUI64 address that we talked about earlier and that's going to give it this globally unique IP version 6 address that it can use to communicate with. First, let's take a look at the stateful auto configuration approach. This is where we're using a DHCP version 6 server. Big difference right off the bat because IP version 6 does not use broadcasts. When the initial message is sent out from the client, it's not a broadcast. With IP version 4 it was. It was a discover broadcast message. Now it's a solicit multicast message. We're sending a multicast message from that client's link local address to a destination address of FF02 colon colon 1 colon 2. We know by the FF that this is a multicast address and something else you might want to put in your notes is that this multicast address represents all DHCP relay agents and servers. We're sending out this multicast to this multicast group to say is there a DHCP version 6 server out there that can give me some IP address information? And this DHCP version 6 server on screen, it responds with an advertise message saying, yes, I am able to provide you with the requested information. Notice the source is that server's link local address and it's sending back to the link local address of the client. So now the client is able to communicate with the server. It can source a request message from the client's link local address to the server's link local address saying, yes, I am requesting this IP address information and the server responds, again using the link local addresses for this communication, the server responds with a reply message that contains this IP version 6 addressing information. That was the stateful auto configuration approach. Let's next consider the stateless auto configuration approach. This is where the router can send a router advertisement to the all nodes multicast address. And the router is going to do this periodically anyway, but sometimes it might be two minutes between the regular router advertisements. That's a long time for the client to wait. So we're about to see how the client can proactively ask the router to send a router advertisement so that the client can learn the information. But let's even take a step back from that. Let's say that this client came up IP version 6 is enabled on the network interface card and uh, as a result that client can automatically give itself a link local address and I've labeled it here on screen as FE80 colon colon and then four A's and the router has four C's at the end of its link local address just to make it easy to interpret the messages going back and forth and what this client might do with its newly acquired link local address is try to make sure that nobody else on the network segment has this link local address. Admittedly that's highly unlikely but it has happened before that a vendor will send out a batch of network interface cards and a bunch of them have the same MAC address. Just as a safety precaution, this client wants to check to make sure that nobody else in this segment has the same MAC address and to do that it sends out a node solicitation multicast packet. Notice the source. The source is colon colon. It's an unspecified address and we're sending it to the destination address that is the solicited node multicast address for the client's link local address. Do you remember the discussion of the solicited node multicast address? We said that every IP address that we're assigning to a client or a router interface, it's going to join a group corresponding to that IP version 6 address. Here the client has a link local address of FE80 colon colon AAAA. Well there's going to be a corresponding multicast group 
for that IP address. And that group is going to begin with FF02 colon colon 1 colon FF and that makes up the first 104 bits of this solicited node multicast address. Do you remember where the last 24 bits came from? It's the last 24 bits in the corresponding IP address. In this case, the last 24 bits are going to be in hex 00AAAA. That makes up this destination address to which we sent the node solicitation message. What we're hoping for is no response. If we don't get a response, that means that this multicast group has no members. In other words, nobody else has a link local address ending in those 24 bits. So as a result, nobody has our link local multicast address. Great news. Now, we want to get off of the local link. We need to get our global unicast IP version 6 address. And we could just wait for the router to send a periodic router advertisement to get that kind of information. But we can proactively ask for it so we don't have to wait. What we do is send out a router solicitation multicast. Again, the source is colon colon. We're using the unspecified address. And we're sending to a destination of FF02 colon colon 2. That is the all routers multicast address. And if we sent this with a source of colon colon, the question is, how does the router communicate back to us? Because we didn't give it a return address. Well, the router, when it sends out a router advertisement, which it's now been triggered to do, it sends that router advertisement to the all nodes multicast address. All nodes on this network segment have joined the group of FF02 colon colon 1. And that's the destination address to which this router is going to be sending this router advertisement. And it includes the global network that we're on, the subnet that we're on. And the client can take its EUI64 address that it generated and stick that on the end of this global address and the subnet address that it learned from the router. And it can construct a globally unique IP version 6 address. And again, this approach to having a client automatically learn its IP version 6 address, it's called stateless auto configuration. In our discussion of IP version 4 traffic flows, we talked about three different ways that traffic might flow through a network. We could have unicast traffic. That was one-to-one -one communication. We're going from one host to another host. There was multicast, where we were going from one host to multiple hosts. These other hosts, the destination hosts, they had joined a multicast group. But the traffic did not go to recipients that did not want to receive the traffic. And the third type of traffic flow we had was broadcast. Broadcast went everywhere. It went to all hosts on a subnet or on a network segment. It's a little bit different with IP version 6. With IP version 6, we still have unicast. That's where, as you see on screen, we're going from one host to another host. It's one-to-one -one communication. We also still have the concept of multicast, where devices wanting to receive multicast traffic, they will join a multicast group. We know that a multicast group begins with FF as the first two hexadecimal digits. And here we've got a video server sending traffic to this group, which happens to have two recipients. There's a non-receiver down at the bottom. It did not join the group. It did not receive this traffic. But there is no concept of a broadcast in IP version 6. But there is another type of traffic flow that we did not have in IP version 4. This other type of traffic flow is called Anycast. With Anycast, we can have multiple devices, such as multiple servers, and they've got the same IP version 6 address. Take a look on screen. We've got server 1, server 2, located in different parts of the internet, available via different ISPs, internet service providers. But notice they both have the same IP version 6 address. They're both 3003 colon colon 1. And our client, 2002 colon colon 1, it wants to send traffic to a server of 3003 colon colon 1. How does it do that? Well, the router, router R1 in this case, is going to determine which of these servers appears to be closer. And that traffic is going to be routed to the nearest server, even though they have the same IP address. For example, on the internet, this could be done with BGP, the Border Gateway Protocol, by simply having each ISP advertise a certain destination network. And our router can see which one appears to be closer, based on BGP's rules for what makes the best path. And if one is determined to be closer than the other, we're going to take that route. We're going to take the optimal 
optimal route. And that's one example of Anycast. But the big takeaway from this video is that unicast is one-to-one -one communication. Multicast is one-to-many communication, or potentially many. It's the devices that have joined a multicast group. And Anycast is a one-to-nearest communication.